Today I'm going to talk about fruit tree pollination, but before I do, let's define the term pollination. Simply put, pollination is the transfer of pollen from the male portion of the flower, which is called the stamens, to the female part of the flower, which is called the stigma. And after that happens, you have fertilization and then fruit production. And you may not know this, but 70 of the top 100 food crops grown in the world are pollinated primarily by bees. Now, when this process happens between flowers on the same tree, then that fruit tree is said to be self-fruitful. Examples include golden delicious apples, Bartlett and Anjou pear, apricots, peaches, nectarines, tart cherries, and some European plum cultivars such as Stanley. If pollination between two different varieties or cultivars is required, then the tree is said to be self-unfruitful and cross-pollination is necessary to produce fruit. Now, fruits requiring cross-pollination include most apples, pears, the majority of sweet cherries, and many plums. Now, even though sweet cherries are self-unfruitful, there are some varieties that are self-fruitful and I'll put a list or a link at the end of the video so that you can find out which ones are. By the way, these are varieties that are recommended for Michigan, so they probably only apply to the Midwest and you should check with your local University Extension Service for recommendations for your area. Now, whether self-fruitful or self-unfruitful, both tree types require a pollinator. The major pollinator are bees, like the European honeybee, bumblebees, and various species of wild bees. For cross-pollination, a good pollinator candidate must, one, bloom at the same time, produce enough viable pollen, and that's not true of all fruits. For instance, Mutsu apple does not produce any viable pollen at all, so it can't be counted on as being a pollen source. And the trees must be genetically compatible. Now, you can't tell that by just looking at them. So a helpful reference for selecting pollination partners is a commercial fruit nursery catalog. They will have a pollination charts for the various fruits which can help you to choose the right match. Now home fruit catalogs will generally have just recommendations as to what are good pollen sources for the different varieties. Now here in my video I have an example of a chart for plums. And if you are trying to determine what's a good pollen source, you simply follow a line from the pollen source down from the, the variety that you want to pollen, you follow that line until the two intersect. And then you look at that point, and if it's a clear open area, and in the case of this chart, then it means that it, it could be relied on to pollinate the variety. Also on this chart, a blue star indicates it's a recommended or a suggested pollinator for that variety. And red, the red marking means that it's the fruit is partially self-fruitful, and if you see a green marking, it means you should not use the variety to pollinate the variety in question that you're looking at. Now, once the selection is made, the trees should be planted fairly close in proximity to each other, at most within 100 feet. In most cases, in a city lot, within the yard is just fine. Now, if you don't have a pollinator, and uh, you're looking for a way to still get fruit, maybe you didn't think about that when you bought your fruit tree, as a temporary measure for cross-pollination, you can take a bouquet of flowers from a compatible variety and simply place it under the tree. And this is a way of encouraging fruit production because bees will go between the two sources. Now, sometimes people will tell me that even though they do not have a pollinator on the property, they still get a crop. Well, one of the reasons for this is a neighbor may have a compatible tree that's close enough to get the job of cross-pollination done. Or in the case of some apples, there are species of crab apples, such as dogo crab, that can act as a pollinator for the apple. Now, people normally would ask, well, is this going to cause me to have a cross between the edible apple and the crab apple? No, that's only if you save the seed. The genetics is already determined for the apple that you've planted. Like if it's a Macintosh, it's only going to produce Macintosh apples, unless it has a mutation branch or something, which we're not going to talk about today. Another thing you need to understand is European and Japanese plums will not pollinate each other due to different blooming times. 
and sweet and tart cherry will not pollinate each other either. Now, although apricots are considered self-pollinating, they will be more productive if you have another variety for cross-pollination. Now, there's one more thing that I wanted to point out to you, is that uh, during the time that the trees are in full bloom and bees are active, you should restrain from using toxic insecticides like seven during that time. In most cases, you don't need to use an insecticide during full bloom anyway. You might have some aphids building up out there, but they can wait until after what we call petal fall, and then you can treat those. But if you use something like seven, it's extremely toxic to bees. It will stick to their little hairy bodies. They'll take it back to their hive and it can wipe out an entire hive. Another thing, when you are spraying insecticides and bees might be in the area, one of the things that you can do is mow down any uh, flowers down in your orchard floor so that that'll force the bees to go somewhere else. And uh, also, <clears throat> when you apply pesticides, apply them really early in the morning before the bees are active so that it has a chance to dry. Because examples, uh, there's an organic pesticide called spinosad that is toxic to bees when it's wet. Once it's dry, it's okay. So you have a better chance of not harming the bees if you spray at a time when they're less likely to be active, either very late in the evening when they're no longer foraging or very early in the morning before they start foraging. So protect the bees. Now I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, have a good and productive day and we will have more videos coming up soon. This is Gary Heilig signing off.